All right, welcome to Smoky Reacts. I'm your boy, Journalist, and on this one, we are checking out I Hate Everything About Them, North London Derby, Derby Days. This is uh, football hooligan beef, how I'm going to uh, equate this, but uh, I don't even know who, which teams this are that this, this beef is. I'm about to learn. However, uh, yeah, I'm currently looking for a team to pick to go through the Premier League with. And then once I pick them, they got to be my dogs because we, we can't be hopping. Damn. If them niggas get relegated, that's going to be terrible. That's going to be terrible. What do you do? What do you do? But, uh, yeah, is there a place I can watch entire matches on video on demand or something like that? Is that a, a, a possibility somewhere, somehow? Because I need to be able to watch a match in full yeah I don't want to just watch no fucking highlights that's just trash especially when I don't know nothing like I can do that shit for basketball but I can't do that like I don't watch highlights for fucking football like I, like American football I watch the entire fucking game and I'm not I'm not trying to see that shit but uh yeah that's uh a question I had let's get into this one thank you for joining me please hit that like and subscribe and let's go cause I don't know myself right now the people when the up the place was bulging the people when the atmosphere was unbelievable you're grabbing him you don't even know his name you're like i love you it's absolute carnage in there i fucking hate arsenal these are the games that are almost impossible for fans to enjoy these are the games that make life a misery if you lose these are derby days some footballing conflicts are born out of political differences other times they come about because of incendiary incidents that occurred in the past. And sometimes fans of two football teams come to hate each other simply because they're there. I hate everything, everything. I hate the colour, I hate the look of their fans, I hate most of their players. I, I absolutely fan. despise what? Arsenal. I completely hate Arsenal. Every Tottenham fan does, obviously. If you're a Tottenham fan, you hate Arsenal. It's as simple okay. as that. The problem with Spurs is because they have been. All right, so Arsenal is one of the four teams I picked to watch a game from last season to see if I want them niggas to be my niggas. So I've got Arsenal, Newcastle, Leicester, and fucking Liverpool. Them the four. But I just had the idea I should watch the rivalry match from last year so I could really see them niggas really playing. Because when you play them niggas you don't like, that's what you see. I'm like, okay, that, that nigga might have some talent. We might need to keep his little bitch ass around. Let's do that shit next week. But, uh... Yeah, that's uh, so I'm gonna have to beef with the Spurs. That that's what this is. This is uh, Arsenal versus Tottenham. Been behind us, um, you know, in terms of the league for decades now. Mm. You know, they haven't finished above us for a long, long time. They're kind of for us. It's like we know we're better. Than, well, I think we feel we've been better than them for as long as we can remember, sure. pretty much. They are so deluded. Like. They live in the past. The fact is that Arsenal have won fuck all for ages. I hate their ground, I hate the area. I think the hatred of Arsenal we have goes deeper than just a superficial kind of derby day hatred that you get in a Merseyside derby or a Milan derby or something like that. We ain't Tottenham and we ain't Tottenham. We ain't Tottenham and we ain't Tottenham. Do you know what? I need to go to that game. I'm actually thinking about it now. I need a ticket. It is probably the biggest derby in the Premiership. It's the biggest game of our season, regardless of what's happening. It is really special. I, I play the big games in uh, in Holland, but this is uh, something different. Now, I know the Scouser derby ever and the Liverpool's huge. I know even Man United and Liverpool's big, but Man. Arsenal and Tottenham, there's nothing like it. The expectations, you know, from the, the fans, the, uh, the pride of North London, us as players know what it means to the supporters and uh, it's, it's a big game and, and one we always look forward to. There's so much on the line. I'm already having nightmares about it. I'm already stressed out. No football fan enjoys a big derby game until the final whistle's gone, and only then if you haven't lost. It will be more relief than anything else. I mean, that's the thing about an Arsenal game, that an Arsenal game that you've won, yeah. it's more the kind of feeling it's of, just agony. Thank, yeah, yeah, thank fuck that's finished. When, when, have you, when, you, yeah. when, have you, um, when have you ever sat there? <laughs> and enjoyed it, never. Yeah. I mean, it, it's nasty, it's a great experience, yeah. uh, particularly if you get a good result, but uh, yeah, take your tin hat. I'd be quite happy to pay 60 quid for Spurs to go one nil up after five minutes and everybody say, okay, that's it. Yeah. But you know, they're not from North London, they're from South London, so it's, in a sense, it's, in some ways, it's just another London derby. 
<laughs> this time I'm in North London for a match which when first played over 100 years ago wouldn't really have been considered a derby. What the fuck is a derby? When this fixture was first played, it took place between Tottenham Hotspur and a team then known as Woolwich Arsenal, based on the other side of the River Thames, here in South East London. We started as Woolwich Arsenal um, in, in glamorous South London and um, for various reasons decided to move north. Arsenal decided to make the move in 1913 to Highbury because it was quite hard for people, fans, to get via train to where they play and their attendances were suffering a great deal. Although I knew about Arsenal's history over the other side of the river, I've always assumed that since their move north was over 100 years ago, no one cared or perhaps even remembered anymore. But this is a derby and I should have known that this when it comes to these matches, nothing is ever forgotten. He moved them across North London to try and make more money. They did so in 1913 <laughs> on a 20-year lease. And hey, I want to have a drink with this nigga and just have him tell me how much he hate these niggas because the way he fucking just chats shit on these folks' name is hilarious. It's the just the, the slyest digs. Oh, they moved over there because they wanted to make more money. <laughs> like, they don't love fucking football. <laughs> they did it for the money. <laughs> and immediately that caused friction between the two clubs. Grasping at straws, aren't they? Ways to kind of beat uh, Arsenal with, you know, kind of anything. They'll cling to anything, something that happened 80 years ago. <laughs> we just always still call them the Woolwich Wanderers. And now if you go there where they actually originated, there's just statues of big cannons and stuff there. And it's just, they really need to go back there. I just feel they're a bit like, refugees, you're not meant to be here. I'm like, so the Americans, they're not meant to be there. They came, now the United States is all theirs. Gypsies, if that's the right word to use. They like to travel around a lot. Um, they don't really stay in one place because then they moved to Highbury about 50 years later. They moved up the road to the actual Arsenal, so they moved to the Emirates. Didn't they put a bid in for the Olympic Stadium, um, which is in East London? Yeah, um, they do. Yeah. And you know, they could easily be in East London now if everything had yeah. gone their way. So yeah. it goes to show, I think they should kind of come off their high horse. But we decided to stay in Tottenham and it's our roots. We're the only North London side. Does it have an effect on the way it, it's viewed now? Maybe for the older generation, yes, because it's still sort of maybe resonates in their mind, they might remember it to some extent. As an Arsenal fan from the new generation, especially from the early 90s, I don't think it makes any difference. They don't belong over here, they belong over there. Whilst I think it's fair to say there's always been a decent level of animosity between both sets of fans, there is a particularly notorious incident that occurred back in 2001 that really served to increase the tensions. The changing over between two clubs is, I'm not saying it's unique, but it's very seldom, you know? Honestly, I think it's disrespectful. I hate that guy. I find it very difficult to talk about Sol Campbell. After oh, allowing his contract him. to expire, club really icon feel. and Tottenham captain Sol Campbell moved down the Seven Sisters Road and joined Arsenal on a free transfer. You know, he'd been expected to go abroad. Free transfer is English for free agent? Mm. By a lot of people, there's a lot of talk about Inter Milan and Barcelona. First of all, he said he wasn't going to go anywhere, even though his contract was running down. He said he was going to stay. To then he me. said if he went anywhere, he'd probably go what to Barcelona or something because he wanted to play, play abroad. When it happened on the day... What the fuck? Who the... F Stomach punch the editor. Give me back my nigga. He, he not only is going to give me the most factually based recount of all the shit the nigga said before he took the deal for all the money and went and ran, ran with the other squad, but the way he's increasingly getting pissed off is just prime. Why do, oh, that the man, I like a poet, but this was not his time. Hey, I remember it was mad because there was a press conference. The sports news came on Five Live and everyone mm -hmm. knew Sol Campbell was out of um, contracts and they suspected that he was going abroad. And they said, we've had an extraordinary turn of events at, at Arsene Menger's Arsenal press conference. He's come on grinning. Everyone was just sitting down thinking, who is it, who is it? And no one had a clue who it was. He said, I want to introduce you to someone. Literally, he comes out I said, oh my God, do you understand what you're doing? I find it very difficult to talk about, so. Let me see this. Frank McLintock. Yeah, we're about to have ourselves a, a viewing together. I can't, I can't do this shit. I need to see the disrespect. Nah, we don't have that. We don't have y'all have video fucking everything. Come on, man. Oh. 
oh, this is just fucking rubbish. What is this fucking bullshit? Oh, it's trash. The police was bullshit. On his contract, it happened when news from return of events at uh, Arsene Menger's Arsenal press conference. He's come on grinning. Everyone was sitting down thinking, Who is it? Who is it? And no one had a clue who it was. He said, I want to introduce you to someone. Literally, he comes out. I said, Oh my god, do you understand what you're doing? It wasn't just what he did, which do you in itself would have been doing? the greatest act of treachery ever. It was the way he did it. He lied and lied and lied and allowed them to parade him like that. He just did it on a sneaky thing. He didn't hint at it any part of the season. He's literally just unveiled. That was on a one sneaky of the thing. sort of jaw-dropping moments of English football transfer history. You've cemented your place in the history of football, not just in football. We absolutely needed a kind of totally staunch kind of leader in the middle of defence, and we found Sol Campbell from our biggest drivers. It was absolutely extraordinary in every sense. For that person of that significance, to cross over on a free transfer, bear in mind that you're a Spurs boy. You don't even give any money back to the club. I don't think he understood. I don't, this is where I begin to wonder, sometimes are you in, are you, you re, are you a football fan or give, is it just your job? Uh, we gave him anything in terms club. of adulation and support. We brought him through, you know, what he kept him Tottenham Hotspur. He, he, was, he, he couldn't have been more loved. Sol Campbell just holding up the Worthington Cup in that Hewlett Packard strip. And I used to look at that person and it used to bring me joy all the time because I was like, that's the only piece of silverware I've seen. People like Steven Gerrard are never going to sign for United. People like Gary Neville would have never gone to Liverpool. It was just an act of disgusting treachery by, by a, you know, a morally bankrupt person. Oh this feeling God. in my stomach, I don't think I've, honestly, I could go as far as to say I don't think I've hated anyone. And even to this day, I don't think I've forgiven him. In November of that year, no, Arsenal happy. came to play Spurs. What on earth did he possibly have expected after that? They had great difficulty even getting the Arsenal bus into the ground. They were pelted with rocks and stones and bottles. Anything <laughs> barring physical harm I think is perfectly acceptable. And that's what he got. And the Spurs fans had thousands of balloons with the word Judas. To win leagues, cups, as an Arsenal man, that must have killed Spurs fans, but I'm so happy it did because I can't stand them anyway. <laughs> Whilst the Sol Campbell saga was an obvious point of conflict, my understanding is that this derby has become even more heated over the past decade. I want to know if this is true, and if so, why? I definitely feel like it has got more touchy on their part. It never changed for us, because we was, when I was growing up in the 90s, we was always far behind them. I think what's happened since 06, if I'm being honest with you, this is honest, this is going to upset people, Arsenal got worse. What has started to change is that Tottenham have, you know, got closer and closer to the top four. So as Ari says, like, the, the games are starting to take on more relevance than ever. It's something that has made it very tense, but more on their part. Like I said, we were always bannering them with, with them. When we was low, when we were high, we were always doing it. Now they're really going at us. The love that these two clubs have for their teams and the passion that they show is really something special. And for some, it goes beyond mere support. That's why people say, my dad always said to me, football is definitely a surrogate religion. Because it's the same, it equates, if you're a quite religious person, and you go to church, you can feel the energy amongst everybody when they're um, in their religious practices. Some people go as far as to just, you know, pray to the football gods about certain things. Like they sit down and the night before and they're like, I pray Tottenham win, I pray Arsenal win. And the one game I went to, I'm telling you, like, you feel it. It's just a different, it's not like your average game. There is something in the air and sometimes you can sort of sense what's going to happen. That's my hot chicken, goddammit. And so it is match day. You already know it is because the burger vans are out, the police are patrolling, and most importantly, the fans have taken over the streets of North London. I've spoken to the media, I've spoken to the players, and they've given me their perspective on the derby, but like any intra-city fixture, it's all about the match day experience. So I've come to Tottenham High Road, and I want to speak to the people and see what makes this London's finest biggest games of the season. There's only one team in North London, mate. There's never going to be love between the two clubs, is there? They're in the wrong area. They should go back to Woolwich where they were. Well, my friends are Arsenal fans, so that means a lot. Um, bragging rights for the next few months is the next game. It's part of my makeup, my DNA. Derby's much better because you get a big atmosphere. If we win, it'll make the whole season. It's more intense. You don't really care about anything else about finishing top four because you just want to win this game. Are you an Arsenal fan, you got your kit. Uh, kid and Jordan explain to me why you don't show your kid around here. <laughs> well, actually, I had it open, but I was just down the road and this fella was going to try it on me, but I didn't want to get in a fight. It's going to be heartfelt. 
Boy, if you don't leave me the fuck alone, nigga, they, they ain't cutting you no goddamn contract. You better sit your weird ass down. We be also here today. It's gonna be off the scale. That nigga said he was flagged up in my area, cuz he not supposed to be over here. <laughs> well, it's finally happened. Where your grandma stay? Up, and it's everything we were told. The police have segregated everyone. There's things flying over. Everyone's abusing everyone. You can't hear yourself. Sit for yourself. It's that football hooligan shit. The hatred is so palpable. The, all these cops, all these horses aren't even enough to divide these fans. I don't think I'd want to be an Arsenal fan right now. It's that imposing. Check this out. A lie. Line of Spurs that do not want them in North London. This is what derbies are all about. Just look at the faces. I mean, I don't know if you saw that, but if it wasn't obvious, there was no option to speak to Arsenal. They were basically escorted by a small military unit. Our only option now is to head in and see if the atmosphere amongst 30,000 replicates just those few thousand. I'm pretty sure it will. On the gang, I'm upset. This nigga look mad as fuck. <laughs> And so it ends 1-0 to the Arsenal. How it ended that way, I don't quite know. I guess it was a case of Spurs not taking their chances and Arsenal, and in particular with Siski, taking his. But this is a derby and it's not about on the pitch, it's always about off it. And White Hart Lane with those fans was perfect. I mean, for what it lacked in pyrotechnics and choreography and flares that we saw in Rome, it made up for in, with the voices in the terraces. As for the Arsenal fans, well, I never thought I'd say this, but they were as good as an away section as I've ever seen. They sat in the opposite section to me, but every time you looked over, you could see hands in the air, just a sea of, of skin in full support of their boys. The noise they made was incredible, and perhaps that's why they got over the line. That's it from us here in North London. Next up, it's Dortmund, it's Schalke, it's the Revere Derby. If you want to catch... Yeah, all right. All right. Yeah, I'm going to have to find a way to watch some games from last season, but I think I've narrowed it down to my four. Uh, Arsenal, Leicester, Newcastle, and Liverpool. We got to see who they beefing with, and then just watch a game from what each of them, and then I'm going to pick who looked the, the craziest, like, yo, them niggas look crazy. Like, yeah, they could play. So, yeah, that's going to be it for me. Thank you for joining me on these in this uh, wild-ass adventure because I just randomly just, I seen somebody say something about the Premier League. I was like, oh, that shit coming out? Okay. So, yeah, thank you. I'll see you guys on the next one. I'm out of here.